How's it going guys? Back with another lineup video, back with, you know, a different lineup video. It's going to be very different to how it was last week after we finally beat Everton. But before we get into it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. We're closing on 100 subscribers already, which is absolutely amazing. Thank you all for that. And uh, without further ado, let's get into the video. So as mentioned, we are going for a different approach this time. After our victory against Everton and the team looks a bit more secure, I'm a back Jurgen and say that we're going to go with a 4-3-3. I just think... If we line it up similar to how he did, we could have some success again against Newcastle. And kicking it off in goal, of course, we are going with Alisson, the best goalkeeper in the world. I don't care what anyone says. I'm just going to say, Alisson Becker is the best goalkeeper in the world. There is no one better. Challenge me. Go on. I dare you. In right back, we have got Trent Alexander-Arnold starting again. I mean, he almost got an assist last time. He put the ball in, it deflected. Oh, I don't really count it as an assist for him. But he made that opportunity from being in the right position. He had an overlapping run, which is so rare. It hasn't happened in a long time. Um, but it was nice to see as well. So, yeah. Trent in right back. No doubts in my mind, really. In the first centre-back position, we're going to go with Joel Matip. I thought, you know, he had a bit of a shaky start against Everton. But I still think he's a better option than Joe Gomez. I can't backtrack on myself like that. You, you can't sit there and go, uh, oh, yeah, Gomez is rubbish for a few weeks. And then go, oh, yeah, Gomez didn't do too bad against Everton. Neither of them did too bad. Neither of them had too much to do. But Matip next to his centre-back partner is normally quite solid. And the reason I say that is because we have got... Virgil van Dijk back, who is definitely going straight into the side on left centre-back. I mean, how can you not have him? He's the best centre-back in the world. I don't care what people say, he just is, okay? Yes, okay, he's had a bit of an up-and-down season this year. Maybe that injury is going to sort him out and he's come back. He's coming back into a side that's just won for a change, rather than one that's been losing. So, you know, hopefully he picks up and they can just improve with him in the defence. Andy Robertson showed why every scouser loved him against Everton. The way he laughed at Pickford and all the other Everton players was brilliant. It was why we love Andy Robertson. And uh, it's why, of course, I'm picking him for my left back. Because he can't beat Andy Robertson. I love him. I think he's one of the best left backs in the world. And, you know, there we go. That shows it all. Now, in recent weeks, and, and well, no, not even recent weeks, this season I haven't rated Fabinho. I don't think he's been that good. However, against Everton, it almost seemed like he turned a new leaf. And I'm not going to sit there and say, oh my God, Liverpool are back. This is our chance again. But if we can push on from that performance, have a few good performances like that, then you know what? I might start to say it. But you've got to give the team that had it, that did so much of it a good chance to do it again, you know? So that is why we've gone for Fabinho. And with the solid players around him that he had, you know, we could see the same sort of result. Jordan Henderson was actually the first name on this team sheet for me because he was so good against Everton. The way he played with his heart on his sleeve, he was so passionate. He just kept on running. It was brilliant. It was so refreshing to see someone chase the goalkeeper down. I haven't seen that without Jordan Henderson. I wish more people, I know Nunes does it occasionally, but from the midfield, I wish we saw it more and he does that and it was brilliant to see he had passion he had desire he had power everything I was asking for in the last video didn't put him in because I didn't think he was going to be fit ready for the game but I tell you what he's in this time Jordan Anderson well done and Stefan Bajetic who I have been calling a baller every single week has been performing again he was brilliant against Everton and we are of course putting him in in that left centre mid role where he played last time Henderson, Bajetic and Fabinho. It's probably the best midfield three I've seen all season without a shadow of a doubt, actually. So, you know, they're the ones that are in. I know we beat Bournemouth 9-0 earlier in the season. That doesn't count. That was in a, a blip. This is the best midfield three that we've had all season. And um, let's hope that they can do it two games in a row and then they're actually prove themselves to be the best good feel free for us. Now, in that centre forward position, we are going with Gakpo. I will say that, it, in my eyes, left wing and centre forward are going to be fluid. But Cody Gakpo, once again, showed he can beat a man. He is fast with it. He is good with it. And he makes a right pass. A lot of the times I saw him making the right pass, the right decision, doing the right thing, which is exactly what you need in that centre forward role. And it was really good to see. Of course, he got his goal. It was a tap in. No one's denying that. But it was a great moment and we loved it. So Cody Gakpo, definitely the centre forward position. Now I've been critical of Mo Salah in recent weeks because he hasn't performed to the level that he should. But he scored. So well done Salah. I don't think he had the best of the game still because I think he had a lot of chances where he could have pulled the trigger, could have put some power on it and didn't. But you scored and you got in a position and you showed a bit more desire and passion which is what we wanted 
And that's why you're keeping your place today. I know that Jota and that are coming back and that's going to only put pressure on you to do better. So hopefully you can kick on with that and keep doing better. Um, we shall see. Um, but yeah, you definitely get in the right wing spot because you can't take out a man who scored at the end of the day. He didn't do anything really wrong. Should have scored more maybe. But we won and he scored. So well done, Salah. In left wing, there is only one man for the job and it is Captain Chaos. Absolutely, we love Darwin Nunes here. You know it, I know it, everyone knows it. Darwin Nunes is a king. We love him so much. And he is definitely going to be starting in this left wing role. Slash centre forward. Like I said, them two are going to be fluid. Him and Gakpo switching around all game. And, you know, he's just going to hopefully cause some troubles to that Newcastle defence. Who has been so solid this season. We shall see. We are, of course, the only team to beat them. So, you know, let's go do the double. But yeah, guys, that's how we're going to do it. I know in previous weeks we lined up with a 4-4-2 and I have gone back on that because we won one game. Yes, I see that and I know that. But I will say that that performance was enough for me to be encouraged enough by the 4-3-3 to give it another chance with that false line because Gakpo looked really good there. Although, you know, if, if it's a one game thing, don't be surprised to see me going back to the 4-4-2 and saying we should be switching it up again. But the midfield three worked well. The attack was fast and fluid and strong and Trent and Robertson were overlapping the whole time. So... 4-3-3, had a little bit of fire to it again, albeit against the relegation side in Everton. Um, but yeah, that is going to do it, guys. If you have enjoyed the video today, please do leave a like, subscribe. Like I said, if you've made it this far, you better be subscribed because, you know, we come up with the same content. You must be enjoying it. And uh, until next time, peace.